what's new on the Burlington waterfront. And now it's happening at the waterfront on Lake Champlain. Whatever the weather, there's much to do on the new waterfront, the Burlington waterfront. Hi, welcome to On the Waterfront. I'm your host, Mariah Riggs, and this month I'm really excited to have as my guest, artist David Stoltz. Hi, David, and welcome to the program. Thank you. Well, glad to be here. Um, so, uh, David, uh, let's get into the very beginning. Um, David is actually one of my favorite, has actually come to Vermont artists. Oh, uh, thank you. His work is quite remarkable, um, and so I felt very excited to get him on the show. Um, so David, let's uh, let's kind of go back, get a little refresher for our audience. Um, so David, uh, you were born in New York City. I was uh, born in Brooklyn, New York. Yeah, you were born in Brooklyn, and which is, um, which is New York. New York. For, for most people, it's, but you're born in Brooklyn, and um, what uh, you know, and, and you went into the military. You were raised in New York, and then when you got out of the military um, in 1963, you decided to uh, pursue art. So what led you to wanting to pursue art? What led me to where? Wanting to pursue art. Well, I started doing art when I was like two years old. <laughs> I mean, it was just in me, you know. And I, I, I've done so many drawings in my life. In fact, my mother said that I was doing, did drawings of Daffy Duck when I was like two and a half. <laughs> so it That's just amazing. comes out of me. And drawing is, in a lot of ways, what my work is about. Mm -hmm. If you, it, it really comes out of drawing as a foundation. Well, a lot of great art is foundational in the yeah. fact that it starts with drawing and then moves from there. Um, and so you knew you knew when you got out of the military that that was where you wanted to go. Yes, because I, 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 I was always doing art. And I was very fortunate in my teen years to actually work with a man who was, very, um, who, who, um, was good friends with Jackson Pollock and Wilhelm de Kooning and, that, and the abstract expressionists. And he was himself a very good artist. And I learned so much. I was working with him more than I was going to school. So then, <laughs> <laughs> then I... Which probably served you better. Don't, don't listen to that, students of school. But yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for yeah. me, yeah. you know, school was not the answer. Mm -hmm. The answer for me was to make art. Yep. And so in uh, 1963, uh, where did you go study art? Well, I started at the Art Students League. Mm -hmm. And what is that? And I went there to, uh, in Manhattan. Okay. So it's an art school And that's like one of those schools where everybody went. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then at that point, I was really, very really quite lucky. And I had a great teachers from the beginning. I had John Havanas, who was well known. I had Jose de Crift, who put, um, I asked him one day if I wanted an apprentice. And he said, go to Bill Zorak. And Bill Zorak or William Zorak, Z-O-R-A-C-H. Um, so I went to see him. He lived in Brooklyn Heights in one of those carriage houses. And I walked up the stairs, and his wife, Marguerite, took one look at me. And she said, Bill, hire me. looks just like you. <laughs> so, so he was my really, my, between Mac, I, right from the beginning, I had very good teachers. Mm -hmm. And I really looked for them. I mean, I, I wanted it to get to, to a point where I really, if I was gonna be good, I wanted to really know what it is to be good. Mm -hmm. And there's no substitute for that. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been very fortunate to, to know Henry Moore and, and people like Alexander Calder and, mm -hmm. and have relationships with, with world-renowned critics like mm -hmm. Clement Greenberg and so forth, and, and artists, and major artists. But also, not, that's, not, that's not everything. You still need the other part. But, I was, but that part was very much instilled in me. So when I um, left the Art Students League after two years, mm -hmm. well, I, in between that, I, Bill Zorak mm -hmm. um, got me a scholarship to go to a school called Skowhegan School of Painting and Sculpture, mm -hmm. which is in, Port, in not Portland, Maine, in, in Skowhegan, Maine, near Bangor. And there's where I met my ex-wife, and it was a very special time for me. And we were married for quite a few years. We mm -hmm. went all over the world together, and mm -hmm. and really was great for each other. And then the years went by, and we just separated afterwards. But 23 great years. 
That's a long time. That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> so it's never enough, but it's enough. So uh, what did you do? Uh, what did you do after you got to the after two years at the Art Students League? After the Art Students League, I, I always want. I always liked printmaking as well as, and in those days, printmaking consists of lithographs, mm -hmm. um, um, etchings. Seriographs. They weren't like today when you say, I'm a graphic artist and you're on the computer. There were no computers. No. So I went to Pratt Institute for two years. Okay. And at that point, I was getting itch itchy to get back to, to sculpture. Mm -hmm. And I said to Louise, my ex-wife, I said, look, we, we, I got to learn how to weld. Because mm -hmm. there were no, they weren't teaching that. I really wanted to work in direct yeah. steel. And there was no way of doing it in the schools. And, 1965 or 66, it, they began it, but it wasn't really sophisticated. Mm -hmm. And so we moved to Peterborough, New Hampshire, mm -hmm. and I met um, in, in um, Putney, Vermont. Mm -hmm. uh, we moved to Putney from there, and I met Chuck Jennifer, another well-known sculptor, mm -hmm. who became a very close friend of mine. He just passed away, but he's, a, he's probably the biggest name in Vermont, or was the biggest name. Mm -hmm. and. He was over in Putney, and he, he, he said, well, you know, go to Bennington. Isaac Wicken needs some help. And so we wound up in Bennington, which was another great move I made. <laughs> so in those years, I was working in direct steel. Yep. And that was in heaven. But, and I was having show after show. And then we moved back to New York City in 1976, um, 75, 76. Mm -hmm. And then I really burst. I started doing these big environments. And well, because you moved back to Soho in 1975. Yes. And I, I have to ask you, as kind of a fangirl, what was Soho like in 1975? In 1975, it was great. It was beginning to change, but not really. It, it began, I, I started showing in 1970. Yeah. I was in the first one man, not one man show, I was in a group show mm -hmm. in what was called the 420 building which was the main building on West Broadway. Mm -hmm. And it had Leo Castelli, who was, you know, the heavyweight, his wife, Ileana, but they were separated and had two separate floors. Mm -hmm. And I was in a group show that Clement Greenberg set up with Andre Emmerich, another great dealer. So all of a sudden I was in the mainstream of the art world. Mm -hmm. And we wound up getting a loft. Oh. 5,000 square feet. Don't even, don't even get me started about those days. $250 a month. Okay, so you got a loft of 5,000 square feet in Soho for how much? $250 a month. $250 a month. Wait, it gets better. Oh, we couldn't. <laughs> yes. so, I didn't know where my electricity was coming from. I had no clue. So years went by, and finally they kind of got Con Edison came over after some, we were there for 20 years, and after about 15 years, I said, you know, you've been getting free electricity. I said, well, I don't know. I don't know even where it comes from. <laughs> so I said, uh-oh, we're going to have to pay a fortune. Yep. So they prorated it at $27 a month. So I didn't have to pay back. So all I had, my whole loft cost me $27. So I was yep. paying approximately $275 at that point. That's crazy. And then we got to own the loft. You did? Yeah, and that's a whole different story. Yeah. And it wasn't so great. When you, you, then all of a sudden you had maintenances that were very cheap when we moved in, but when putting in new elevators cost a fortune. Oh yeah, because probably you probably had a condo. You have to go for CEOs and CEOs and, yep. and all that stuff. And it, all of a sudden maintenance now, like for example, the loft mm -hmm. I had, it was on Rooster Street. We paid, when we took it over, I think we paid four and a quarter. Okay. That was maintenance. Okay. I think right now it's up to about 3000 a month. So the artists in that building weren't any famous artists. I was more famous probably the most famous in that building. There were a lot of famous artists around there. But in my particular building, most of them were poor and struggling. And for that, they, 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 they would rent their places. And if I was still living there, that's what I'd be, you know, I'd be paying. But there's one catch. The friend of mine who had the other space across the hall, I had 5,000 square feet, he had 5,000. Wow. And he sold his 5,000 for 16 million. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, no, that sounds about right. That's so, and, and at that point, we'd already gotten separated, and we wound up getting money. You know, it, 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 we, we we took our shares, but in 1990, we had we sold the building for 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 um, five hundred thousand. Yeah. Which sounds great, but that's not a lot of money by no, today's you, standards. I, no, by today's standards, it's terrifyingly nothing. <laughs> and I had to prorate all my kid, my son went to first went to the University of Pennsylvania, then he went to MIT. My daughter went to NYU, <laughs> and I had to pay half of their schooling. So by, <laughs> by the time I got my share and paid for this and that and this and that, I walked out of the this office with everybody wearing these. Armani suits and yeah. these lawyers and with fourteen thousand dollars, <laughs> and my lawyer looks at me and she said, "Now remember, you you have capital gains on that." I said, "What? <laughs> what?" <laughs> oh wow, that's funny. That's crazy. So anyway, that's yeah. Life you should have. You should. Life of artists are never easy. She never moved. Love the uh, love the rent control, right? <laughs> she never should have gotten divorced. Yeah, well, that, that's that's valid too. That's a better way of looking. That, at yeah, it. that's a better way of looking. But it at happens. It. So, uh, so how long were you in Soho? I was in Soho from 1975 to 1990. Okay, so 15 years. And it, it changed, I'm sure it changed a lot during those 15 years. In that years. period, it began to change. Yeah. And for example, I have a piece, or had a piece on West, two pieces on West Broadway, which is the main drag in Soho. Yeah. And it was in quite a few movies, if you've seen Harry Meets Sally. Mm -hmm. they, they had a big argument in front of my sculpture. <laughs> okay, really I'm totally crazy. David. I am totally. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take a look for that. Yeah. Anyway, I, I have this. I had the sculpture up here. I put it up on on the on the on the uh, slides. Oh, good. And so you can see the one that there was in front of. Anyway, what I'm saying is that. So, but besides that, Soho was beginning. Now today, it's just a high end. Oh, it's, know, it's not even the same place. clothing store. What happened was that Soho. The artists weren't the brightest people in the world from a business standpoint. Of course, it's usually and that's not, that's not what we are. Mm -hmm. So, of course, light industry was what Soho is. Mm -hmm. And the um, business mind said, well, I'm light industry. I'll put, I'll put a, a, a sewing machine in the basement yep. and I'll, hand, I'll have somebody stitch a couple of pieces of yep. clothes and I can move in. And that's, that's how it got started. Oh, is that that's how they got why when Soho left, they moved to, to um, Chelsea because there were no visual um, mm -hmm. storefronts. Okay. And that's how Chelsea came about. But now it, it's moved to, a lot of the art world has moved over to Tribeca. This yeah. is, a, you know, it's kind of triangle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the big galleries mm -hmm. aren't giving up their spaces like Agosian and Pace. I mean, they can still they can still they can, they can do whatever they want to do. They, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. They can buy New York City. If exactly. They want. And all the uh, finance guys who now live in Soho can then. Oh, God. Colors and buy everything. That's that's it's real. I mean, you know, I have a very close friend who had um, Spectra Photo, which is on LaGuardia Place, which is right in Soho. And he owned a few buildings. And actually, he may be coming up here to see me. Very close friend. Mm -hmm. And so I go down to New York. I was staying in one of his his rentals because mm -hmm. <laughs> he wasn't renting he, he wasn't worried he had, he had so many it was like twenty five thousand a month wow <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's real it's a so, big difference from 1975 when i was paying 200 a month yeah, yeah at 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 a, at, a, at a zero right that's new york that's significant yeah no, it's well it's everywhere now it's, so so it's in 19 to be an artist today put it that way it really is it, it is that's a whole different philosophical question but this is a very small point, and I don't, mm -hmm. I don't think it's a good idea yeah. to continue on this, but it's a good point. If I was to get oxacetylene, which is for cutting steel and so on, mm -hmm. I can rent, you rent those things, I can rent a container of oxygen about this size in 1970 for $19 a month. Mm -hmm. a, a container, not a month. And they deliver and take them back and refill it. Mm -hmm. a, but that's the largest size you're allowed by law. Mm -hmm. The largest acetylene size would be about, well, this high and about two and a half feet. Mm -hmm. well, that would be about $23 in 1970. Yeah. If you were to get that oxygen today, one tank, mm -hmm. 195 to $200. One tank of acetylene, maybe $350. Wow. 
Wow. So the only people that are, art has changed, and that I don't think it's, I don't want to go too into this too deeply, mm -hmm. but you know I came out of a, a situation where art is art. It doesn't really change that much. For example, I'm working with files now and things I didn't do mm -hmm. when I was in the 1960s. That we had no computers, mm -hmm. so, but the artists today going to school doesn't learn how to weld. Does, those things are passe. Or well, if not passe, they're, they're certainly historical. And they learn how to work and do design. Mm -hmm. And they design on the computer. My son, who's an MIT architect, but went to University of Pennsylvania and studied urban planning for four years and then went to MIT. He, when he graduated Stuyvesant High School, which is also a very good school, high school, he was just at the age where computers were coming in. Mm -hmm. And when he arrived at, at Penn, mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry, just before, he won High School of the Year award for being the best draftsman in, in high school. Mm -hmm. He got to the University of Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. I mean to, to um, I yeah, University of Pennsylvania, yep, yep. and he didn't draw again, he was on computers. Yep. And when I meet him all the time or see him, he's got three monitors and he's on, <laughs> and that's what yep. it is today. Yep. And he sometimes says to me, you know, Dad, I wish I'd kept on drawing, but I, I don't think that matters. I think art finds its own direction, its own way. Yeah, because art's a reflection of the society. Yeah, that it's a it. manifestation of the time. Yeah, exactly. Whatever society is that creates it, it's a reflection. So of that. if you're if if you're a really good designer, you you'll design something great. Mm -hmm. If you're not, you won't. <laughs> This is as simple no, as that. And, 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 I, and I know that. <laughs> but but, <laughs> but yeah. Mariah, what won't happen mm -hmm. is that a lot of people won't have the opportunity to have hands on like I did. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that a lot of other people that are very good designers will wind up going with architects that have all the money and all the buildings and they have a 1%, 1 of a, a $300 million building, you got a lot of money. Yep. <laughs> So they got a lot of money to, to, to pay the artists to do something. Yep. So it's a, little, it's a different world, but art is art. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna change, it hasn't ever changed since the beginning <laughs> when they worked in, the, in those caves in, yeah, yeah, no, in, in France. And yeah, we blew, we blew the ochre around the hand, right? right? right. You know? It's a real thing. Um, so so after, you, after you left, uh, when you left New York um, in, uh, in the 90s, uh, what, what did you go do? After I left New York in the 90s, I, I moved to Amsterdam. Okay. I was kind of really torn apart by my, by my breakup. Yep. And before that, just to go on a little bit, we broke up in 1986. Mm -hmm. And that, that same night, June 15, 1986, I did a little carousel. That's on my website, but it's not on, this, on these films here. Mm -hmm. And I can show it's called a clay carousel. Mm -hmm. And it was 20 inches in diameter, this high. And I did it as a catharsis. Mm -hmm. And then, over, then in 19, around 1995, mm -hmm. I decided, you know, I've made all these changes in my work. Mm -hmm. I've gone from total abstraction to representation with abstraction. Mm -hmm. And I really want to do something special, so I was going to build a carousel. And I made about 35 little plaster pieces. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I came up here that I was able to put this together with 3D printers and, and laser cutters and so forth. So I was very fortunate that I was an artist that lived long enough to span the... There's really very little difference between the 60s and, and today as an artist, except the computer. And that makes it different in a different way. I mean, either you're going to be good or you're not going to be good. If, if you could sing like Paul, like Jack, uh, John Lennon, then you're good. Yeah. Or, or Bob Dylan. If you can't, it won't make any difference. You're right. At least you got the writing chops. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so when you, uh, so I'm just trying to kind of get the timeline too. So you, you were in Amsterdam in Paris. Did you, and then did you come back to New York at some point? I kept on coming back and forth. I couldn't make up my mind what I was doing. And mm -hmm. it's kind of, which Not, I never like was better. lost making art. I always kept on drawing, okay. but I was really shattered over the breakup of my of my yeah. life. So in a sense, mm -hmm. the carousel is really a love story, <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm I unabashedly say that. So we should talk about that a little bit. So I think um, 
to get into that, so you you went back, you spent the 90s in the, in, in, you were in New York, and um, you got a commission in 2019 to come to Vermont, and the commission was for the carousel that you'd been incubating. No, I didn't get a commission to come okay. here. Okay, okay. I came here, um, there's an artist, you may know him, Clark Dubas. Hmm? Okay, Clark, I met Clark in Florida. And, and for our audience who doesn't know Clark. Who, yeah, who but you, Clark? I think you yeah, would no, know no, him, who, yeah. Who is, who is Clark? Tell uh, Clark is a wonderful artist. He's, I don't know how old he is now, because, but I met him in Florida, mm -hmm. and he was here in Burlington, mm -hmm. and he said, why don't you come up? And, and, and just, you'll love it up here. And I came up, and I didn't love it, but I said, I'm gonna stay a while. Mm -hmm. Don't love the winters. <laughs> Especially when I was in Florida. <laughs> anyway, and, and, but I, I wound up going over to the Pine Street studio and I made a sculpture there, mm -hmm. spent about a month and a half. And when I made a decision to work on my carousel, Clark was living here and he mm -hmm. said, why don't you come up and, and you know, Elliot Katz, mm -hmm. who you know probably, mm -hmm. was, was working at Generator. And Generator is my lifesaver. It just opened up, yeah. you know, everything. And, Michael Metz at Generator has been just so such also a, a let's real a, friend. let's do a great plug here for the generator. So why why is the generator such? I mean, you're you're, you're well, somebody who comes from sort of an international background. I mean, what what well, what's generator so gave me the opportunity the to just be. There were some really good people up here that, mm -hmm. that I was able to hire to work with me. Mm -hmm. And I learned how to work on a 3D printer. I'm dyslectic. I'm not very good on a computer. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I know what I want, and I've always had like three or four or five assistants. Mm -hmm. And you, when you have people, you have people working for you. Mm -hmm. And you know that you try to get the best out of what they give you. Mm -hmm. that, and that's the leadership quality. And I'm very good at that. I've always had good assistants, great assistants. Mm -hmm. And I found a few up here. So I was able to to start working on, first I did a couple of those big wall pieces that you saw when you came over. And then I went into the carousel doing with the th 3D printer and made a model that is, has over 60 pieces in it now. And it's become, I call it a model, but it's a work of art. <laughs> I mean, it's, it really, it's yeah. like no other model, that, you know, nobody would make a model this big. So, but, but it has all the elements of a model and mm -hmm a finished work. In a sense, to me, it's like cold as circus. It's a centerpiece. And then when you came over, if you notice, I started making pieces in wood. I never worked in wood, mm -hmm. but the CNC, which is a, a router, mm -hmm. electrified router, and, mm -hmm. and fi works on a file, was able to take those plastic pieces and blow them up. Wow. So I started working in wood. And all of a sudden, another person appeared who was about as good a wood carver as you can get anywhere. And, and, and he's working with me right now. So I've That's been great. very fortunate to get the right people. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to say that it's luck. There's no such thing as luck. Branch Rickey, who was brought in Jackie Robinson to baseball, had a great line. He, he, he would have been a great general manager anywhere. <laughs> and somebody said to him, um, boy, you're so lucky. Mr. Ricky, and he said, luck, luck's, I'm not lucky, luck is the, res is the residue of design. <laughs> and that's a famous yep. saying, and it's mm -hmm. true. I mean, yep. you make your luck, yep. and you find it. Mm -hmm. And I found it here, and I stayed here, you mm -hmm. know, through the pandemic, and now I'm, I'm getting to a point where the carousel's getting finished, yep. and I'm getting a lot of feedback from a lot of places now. Mm -hmm. People are really wild about it. And here I am in, in my golden years, is that the right one? <laughs> I don't feel it, but I'm in it. Mm -hmm. And I've completely metamorphosized into an, a different kind of artist than I was in the days when my work was in big steel pieces mm -hmm. and places like Storm King Museum where there were 100 foot colders and so <laughs> forth. <laughs> Weighing 80 tons. And, yeah. and so it's very exciting to be in this position right now. It's, it's very frightening, not frightening, and not even confusing. It's very, I don't know what the word is. It, it, it's just, it is, it's, a, it's an artist's life. Well, it is also is an evolution. It's an evolution. It, yeah, it's an evolution of, of, of your art. So, you know, and I'm glad that I'm, I'm right at the point where the, where the carousel 
So let's but, uh, let's quickly talk about the carousel. Great. Um, so I think that's important. So the first, and it, it just from what I've heard just now, it sounds like the idea for the carousel uh, came about actually during your divorce. Uh, 1990 was the first iteration. Well, no, 1990 is when I sold the loft. Yeah. We we well we divorced in 1990. I'm mm. sorry. But we yep. broke up in in 87. Okay. And I stayed in the law for a couple of years. She, she was very wealthy and could move out. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't very wealthy. <laughs> I I know, that's a real thing. So, but when, when did the first germination of the carousel come into being? The first one was a, a small one that, mm -hmm. it happened the, the, the very night that we broke up. Mm -hmm. I just picked up some clay and a, a edge dried clay. Mm -hmm. And it's on my website, it's called the clay carousel. And it's very childlike. Mm -hmm. And it's, a, it's 20 inches in diameter and 20 inches high. Mm -hmm. And I started making that, not for any reason other than just a catharsis. Mm -hmm. And once I did that, I went around to a couple of dealers, but the time we broke up in 87 was the worst time for the art world, because that's when the, the stock market crashed. Yeah, yeah, it was the big crash in 87. So that was a big problem that set in. And that's why I, I, I drifted a little bit and then wound up in Europe and worked on bigger commissions. And when I came back, in, to New York in 95, permanently, yep. I, I, I made about, oh, maybe 30 small characters in plaster. Mm -hmm. And even then, it was just still going from German, germination to assimilation to completion. Mm -hmm. and, it, and I was in the assimilation for a long time because I couldn't figure out how I'm going to get mm -hmm. the money to blow these up. Yeah, Ideally, I would have liked to put it in bronze. Yeah, it was about 25 years ago, right? I mean, I that's mean, a real it's astronomically long time. expensive to build yeah. anything today. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, that's another good point. So is it a lot more expensive to actually craft the work that you used to craft now, comparatively? Has is it, it a lot more? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. The prices have skyrocketed. I mean, I, that, I, I gave you the I mean, example the, the, the of the oxygen acetylene. Yeah, yeah, the gas. Oxygen and acetylene is a yeah. perfect. It, it's not the only thing, but I gave that that yeah. example as one of it. Mm. And so you've seen a huge amount of inflation. I don't costs. think many people could afford to go to art school today in the mm -hmm. sense of the way I went to art school. Yep. At this, either you, if you're a trust fund baby and you've got a family that can give you help, Maybe. you can do it. But most people can't do that. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's, and that's a real, I think, a huge stepping stone problem for a lot of people who do want to become artists. So, that, you know, artists find ways, and that's mm -hmm. the beauty of art. Artists is, Art, if it's in you to be an artist, mm -hmm. that's it. <laughs> You're an artist. <laughs> if it's not in you and you try to be an artist, that's a very sad person in a lot of ways. I, I know a lot of people like that. Yeah. When I was at Skowhegan, I had a very close friend, John Ventimiglia, and I always admired him because he was a virtuoso. And we were young. We were 20 years old. Mm -hmm. And we stayed close. He, he moved to Portland, Maine. Mm -hmm. And I got married in Portland. Louise, my ex-wife's family, lived mm -hmm. in Portland. And... So John and I were very close for many years. Mm -hmm. John decided one day that he had nothing to really say as an artist other than his virtuoso mm -hmm. manifestations. Yep. So he became a first-rate professor of art. Mm -hmm. and, and he really made the Portland Art School. Oh, that's wonderful. And that's he's great. very happy. And I talked to him quite a bit. So, but that's a rarity. Most people aren't, don't do that. You can kind of pivot and go. I mean, that's the other thing, too, that I've always said. If, if, if you don't necessarily have maybe the drive or the talent, the art community always needs people in business. <laughs> and maybe that's just my perspective, but I, I've always said that, that that's a real, it's a real thing, you know, if you've got the head for yeah. it. Um, so I want to get back to the carousel. Great. So um, you've been doing this work at the generator. And are you done with the model at this point? Am I done with it? It has to be painted. I've started painting it. Yep. And it's about, it still needs a good month's worth of painting and cleaning up, and then it's finished. Okay. And at that point, I don't want to send it out to, I'm, I'm still pretty connected to some major galleries. Mm -hmm. I've showed in major galleries, I still have connections to some. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's a very good idea to send anything out mm -hmm. piecemeal. Yep. It's, it's much better to have it finished. Yep, of course. And so that's what I'm, um, that's the point I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. But in between that, I'm making all these smaller pieces, and mm -hmm. and then I just had a piece. I, I sent that to you, the thing in Wichita, Kansas. Yeah. So if if one of our viewers, if any of our viewers are interested, um, I would definitely recommend uh, checking out uh, David's website. 
um, seeing the work that he's done and um, on your website, does it have the contact information? Yeah, to everything's on my website. So everything's on David's website. And I would really recommend um, contacting David, reaching out to him, checking out the website because a lot of his work's on there. And if you're interested in any of his remarkable work, some of the images you've seen today, um, please contact David and let him know uh, because most of his art is for sale and it is remarkable. Thank you. Um, uh, there, aren't, there aren't many artists in Vermont uh, who create kind of the caliber of work that, that David does. And, Thank um, you. And no, I mean, it's, it's true. Uh, it, it, it's great. And um, so I really, I really recommend that you do that. Um, also, if you want to reach out and hear more of David's remarkable and amazing life, which is utterly fascinating, uh, please, uh, please feel free. I'm sure he'd love to talk to you. Um, David, thank you so much for coming on the program today. It's been oh, a real treat. Oh, thank you for having I, me. I really, I really enjoyed it. It was fun. It's been a lot of fun. And thank yeah. you guys for coming here. And um, we'll see you right back here. Um, I will not be here next month. Uh, next month I will be on summer vacation. Uh, but I will see you back here in September. So thank you very much, and I'll see you then. Take bye care. Bye-bye. Thank bye. you.